This is the Full Metal Effenherstel Scar L, licensed by G&G. &G. It comes with a standard G&G &G high cap mag, the bipod foregrip, pops out, folds and locks back in, a flip up front sight and a flip up rear sight, the nice Effenherstel Scar L trademarks right on the side, a functioning bolt catch, Right there, box in, adjustable hop up right there, and then to place it back in, just press the button. The folding stock, just like regular scar L. Cheek riser, cheek riser, right there, adjustable rear stock. The numbers on the front top rail. Which are nice if you put a sight on the gun. You can, you know exactly where you had the gun, or the sight, on it. Uh, ambidextrous settings on the fire selector. Fire selectors on both sides. Same with the mag release on both sides, which is nice. Uh, the FPS on this gun was probably around 380 when I first got it. I adjusted the spring, so it's not shooting at that range anymore. But it was around 380 when I first chronoed it. The flip up sights are nice just because you don't have to worry about, if you put a sight on the gun, you don't have to worry about getting a riser or anything like that with the as you would with a regular standard M4. Because uh, you can just fold the sights down on you. The rear sight does adjust for windage and elevation, right here and here. Um, Counterclockwise threaded flush hider, so it'll fit most. Counterclockwise threaded flush hider, and it does have sling attachments here, 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 and then on the left side too. So if you're if you're left-handed or right-handed, this honestly would be a perfect gun. I I am left-handed, as you can tell. Uh, so this gun works great for me, which is why I got it over the standard M4s, whereas I would have to actually do a little bit more work with the gun. To put the battery in the gun, you lay it like that, which is another nice thing about the flip-up sights is you can lay it flat and it actually will stay for you. And then on this side, there's a button right here. Just press it in and that will pull it out. And then take screwdriver, flathead, push in this little pin right here, push it out, and pull it out. Wheels right out. And then to get to the, the battery actually goes here, but in order to get to the Tamiya plug, which comes out here, there's a little pin you push this one, this end, and you just pull it out the other end. And then you can remove the rubber butt pad and then push the cable through the front and there's your Tamiya plug right there which makes it easy then just put the battery in, attach it close the cables back down fold in there nicely with no little problems and then just stick in right back in you're good to go uh, I'm going to go ahead and address one of the cons to this gun so there's these little metal prongs right here that, that have to line up with this piece right here which was kind of a pain because you could easily if you're doing this in a hurry and not paying attention you could easily bend these little prongs so an easy way to adjust this is never be in a hurry when you re replace your battery or you could just make sure to fold those in first to find the prongs first put it in and then just push press the button and make a nice push it's all in there so then your battery you're all set powered up and ready to go um, So then you're ready to go. Um, the cons to this gun, one is the cable in the rear stock. When it folds, this is exposed. Which, I mean, it could, in in a hurry, it could jam. But I, I've folded this stock enough and I've been running around with it. It doesn't. I haven't had a problem with it. It fits into this nice little well perfectly and doesn't really give you a problem. 
Another con is the bolt catch is really loose. So you, I actually have to hold my finger to the bottom of the bolt catch in order to get it to lock. And if you're not careful, when you're adjusting your hop-up, you can actually tap that button very lightly and it will close on you, which doesn't exactly feel comfortable. I've had that fall on my thumbs a couple times. Uh, otherwise, it's a great gun. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, like I said, I did replace the spring, which honestly, everyone makes a big deal about taking these guns apart. It says that they're a huge pain. I didn't have as much problem with it as I did. As some people say it is, it honestly took me to probably around 20 minutes to get this lower receiver completely unassembled and with the spring taken out and then re uh, put back together the entire gun. Probably only about 20 minutes, which I didn't think was honestly all that bad.